thank you so much for making a date on the marketplace. Welcome back. Now, from June this year, the Ghana Statistical Service would start using a new formula for calculating economic growth rates. The rebased GDP estimate calculation will result in officials adding some new items to the basket used in measuring economic growth, as well as changing the base year. But why is this a big deal for managers of the economy and businesses? There's more in this report. The Statistical Service is finally going ahead with this new way of measuring GDP estimates after using almost a year to collect the additional data and carrying out the necessary test runs and even engaging industry players. The action, according to analysts, could result in the economy expanding and give us the true picture of the size of the economy, looking at development over the past years. Acting government statistician Bawa Die, however, insists it's too early to assume that there would be some significant increase in the size of the economy as a result of this exercise. Obviously in the past all rebasing have resulted in some expansion in the economy because unobserved sectors or sectors that were not included in previous rebasing are brought into the estimation of the economy. Mm. But let's wait and complete this rebasing process and we can give you there's that outlook for the country. A bigger economy would obviously lead to a reduction in the debt to GDP ratio given room for more borrowing. Well, the question is, where will these funds be directed to? And would we not get into this bracket in five years' time? However, on the other hand, the country has one of the lowest rates when it comes to our tax-to-GDP ratio. So rebasing the economy could put pressure on government to increase the tax rates or expand the net to accommodate more persons that are not being captured. This is because there could be pressure on government to deal with this challenged post-rebase economy. Now, the first Atlantic Bank has advanced moves to attract new investors in rice issue as a strategy to help meet the new capital requirement before the deadline set by the Bank of Ghana. It hopes to achieve this target by June this year. The Bank of Ghana has given up to December to all universal banks in the country to raise their minimum capital of 400 million Ghana CDs. For First Atlantic, we, we started the journey to in, increasing our capital well before the Bank of Ghana came out with its uh, directives. We had a plan, which we've had to accelerate, but thankfully we're on our way to meeting the capital requirements by June at the latest. It's a combination of rights issue to existing shareholders and the private placement to new investors. And we're well advanced in that uh, program, and we're very confident that by June will be done. Indeed, as we announced early in the year, we got money in from... Um, a private equity firm and uh, so the, the shareholder, shareholders base for, for, for the bank is diversified and we have people there with deep pockets and uh, they have made commitments to us which we know they will keep like they've kept in the past and uh, the plan is unfolding very well we, we have no um, issues at all we would make the necessary announcements at the right time and uh, First Atlantic would, would definitely transit uh, to a higher status. Okay. Raising money from the uh, market, as you said, are we also looking at other investments outside the market? Um, yeah, there are, there are various options. Uh, but at this stage of fundraising for our capital, we have to be clear in our minds where, where it's coming from. If you're not clear by now, you're not likely to succeed. So we're very clear existing shareholders are bringing money, um, identified new investors are bringing money, and uh, it's going very well. In other news, local Ghanaian renewable energy production firm TC Energy signed a deal. Chief Executive of TC Energy, Anthony Opoku, noted the under $200 million project has the capacity to transform the country's power situation. Seabase will build a 100 megawatt power plant in Ada for 24 months after receiving payments. Our aim here is to ensure that as soon as Seabase gets everything settled, they should hand over the plan to us in 24 months. That they are here basically to organize with the local contractors that they will be working with. Obviously, they can't build this without the locals too. So they have local companies and they have some international companies. The expected impact is to, uh, to the stability of our grid. We, we, we want to stabilize the grid because the sea can produce 24-7. And with that, we can have constant flow of energy uninterrupted. Now, still staying in energy, Chinese firm BXC is moving to halt the process of handing over ECG to a new owner. 
This was after it filed a written court over how it was disqualified in the contest to select a preferred owner for the ECG. This morning, this report. According to the rates filed by BXC and cited by Joy Business, BXC Ghana, Beijing Xianxian Technology Company based in China, and Shanxi Regional Electric Power Group are the complainants, while MIDA has been cited as a defendant. BXC in the rates is seeking a permanent injunction on the processes to settle on the final winner on bid contest and restraining MIDA from going ahead with any form of negotiations. The company is also seeking a CD equivalent of $4 million as compensation for MIDA as cost of preparing the documents for the ECG bid contest as well as general damages for what it describes as unlawful disqualification from the bid process. MIDA in a statement recently announced that it has been served with a rate and assured it will continue to uphold high standards of integrity in the transaction process. It is unclear for now when the case will be heard in court and possible implications on the privatization of ECG. Looking at the tight schedule Ghana has in assessing U.S. compact funds, to help restructure the energy sector. Moving to the downstream petroleum sector now, an indigenous oil marketing company, Goil, has been selected among other local oil marketing companies to lead implementation of the gas cylinder recirculation module. To this end, Goil has been mandated to build three gas filling plants in various parts of the country and also cater for the distribution of LPG across the country. CEO of the company, Patrick Akorley, stated this in an interview at Goyle's 49th annual general meeting in Accra yesterday. Ebenezer Sabote's report is read to you. President Ekufuado in October last year directed that the new cylinder recirculation module for LPG distribution be implemented to reduce the risk of accidents at the various gas filling stations in the country. This means LPG bottling plants will be sited away from congested commercial and populated areas. As part of government's mandates, the local oil marketing company, Goyal, will procure, brand, maintain and fill empty cylinders for more distribution to consumers and households through retail outlets. Managing Director of Goyal, Patrick Akoli, has been explaining in an interview with Joy Business. Companies who be in charge of the distribution of what? The LPG bottles. You go. To, we we will have a filling plant at Tema. We have one in Kumasi, and then we also have one in in Temale, which will be doing the cylinder refilling. Then we will have uh, vehicles who will go around distributing the what the cylinders, the filled one. So the customer will no, will no longer go to a filling plant with, with an empty bottle to get uh, the, the cylinder filled. You know, we just want to eliminate the contact of, of the customer and the filling plant so that, you know, we can reduce the, the, the number of incidents that occur at these filling plants. He disclosed Goyle is earmarking about 50 million CDs for the program. He however assures shareholders that the company will be paying high dividends soon when the company starts realizing proceeds from other investments it has made so far. I want to operate as a commercial enterprise, bring, what, increasing the shareholders' value. But at the same time, as the largest oil marketing company in the country, we are also looking at the economic fortunes of the country. We don't we want to what, distort the, what, the market. So we are trying to you know, marry the two positions. How much is the LPG going to cost you? How much is the program going to cost you? Is this to meet other people? Oh, uh, it's an investment. It's being appraised, but it's, we, we, we are likely to invest over 15 million Ghana cities. Okay. Towards the whole program? Yeah. Shareholders have approved an amount of almost 11 million CDs as dividend for the year ending 2017. All right, so let's now get in touch with Richmond Roxon, an energy expert with the energy think tank IES, for some further thoughts on this particular development, what it holds for the downstream sector, and what it holds for gas distribution in the country. Good afternoon, Richmond. Welcome to the market, please. Good afternoon, Tim. Good afternoon, Tim. All right, so the decision to give Goyle the mandate to construct, you know, filling plants across the station, plus two other com companies in the oil marketing sector, what's your take on this and how do you think it hopes to improve uh, the gas situation? Uh, if you recall, in where we are today, because 
uh, of the challenges that we've had in the sector, especially when it comes to LPG. We've had a number of explosions. And um, the last one which triggered, uh, uh, which triggered the conversation and the review of the processes that we use uh, was the one at Atomic Fidelity Station where uh, properties worth millions of dollars uh, was lost at that uh, explosion. Uh, over the period, the NPA have noticed um, that we're going to have the cylinder recirculation model. It's gone, it has had cabinet approval. Uh, there have been challenges, especially uh, with stakeholders complaining that enough consultation had not been done. Uh, over the period, uh, more consultations have been done. We've had experts come into the country. Recently, we had some Indians also coming into the country to deliberate with the National Petroleum Authority on the way forward. But even though uh, uh, there are challenges, especially when it comes to job losses, uh, the longer short is that we are trying to prevent explosions, then we have said that the consultations must still go on. Uh, it is fair that we engage the LPGMC to be able to tackle the issue, to, to make sure that uh, we are going to deal with the job losses that is going to come with it, uh, especially investments that people are also done, so that at the end of the day, uh, we won't have people folding up or making losses. All right. So yes, with Coil coming in, yes, it's an indigenous company. It means that the investments are going to be in Ghana, as they said yesterday. They are still at the appraisal stage, and they are looking to invest about 15 million Ghana uh, into the sector. Now, which one? Let's look at pricing, which is also an issue. Do you think that uh, with Coil and just these two companies alone distributing gas across the whole country, is it going to, you know, impact? You know. Are we going, not going to witness an upward trend in pricing of LPG in the country? Uh, we've done some work on it, and uh, uh, we are still waiting for the NPA to bring the pricing structure. But from where we sit, it appears that definitely uh, we have to introduce a margin to be able to take care of it, which might shoot the price up slightly. So yes, um, that is the estimate and the calculations that we've done. But we are waiting for the MPA to be able to publish it pricing structure uh, as to how it's going to go about it. Don't forget that we are expecting uh, the policy to be rolled out this year. Uh, the cabinet approval was last year and it was supposed to take effect this year. So we are waiting for them to be able to publish it. Then we'll be able to interrogate uh, their price. But from where we said definitely it is possible that <coughs> margins will be introduced to be able to take care of it because you have a cylinder bottling company somewhere. At the end of the day, they are going to refill them. They're going to bring them to the distribution point uh, to be able to uh, sell to the ordinary consumer. They're going to have a lot of cylinder because the policy that once you go to the, the distribution center, you just put your old cylinder there, you carry the new one, uh, which has been filled already, and you leave. So you are not going to uh, stay at the, the filling station for the uh, cylinder to be filled before you, before you even get the insurance. So you just make it and go. So there are associated costs that is going to come with it, especially right. of cylinder and all and the distance from the bottling company to the distribution centers. But like I mentioned, those are work that we have done. So we are waiting for the MPs to be able to publish uh, what they are going to use as the private structure. Now, so aside from this, are we saying that, you know, these three companies uh, are the only companies that would be allowed to engage in the implementation of this module? What are the other companies going to do? Are we not sidelining them? It's not unfair for them. Yes, it's, it's, it's one of the issues we raised last year uh, because initially, in fact, the companies and the LPGMC were not even engaged uh, at all. Uh, what it is was that because the NPM government had had cabinet approval, they were just rolling it out. Uh, if you remember at the point, there were even demonstrations from uh, the LPG marketers and exactly. associations to be able to register their displeasure. Yes, like I mentioned, that there are the job losses and the, the, the investments that over the years have been done. The MP must be able to address it. Uh, they are saying that with uh, what they have, the details they have, as well as going to create more uh, employment for people. But at the end of the day, they haven't addressed the investment aspects where people have taken loans or people have run business for 20, 30 years. Eventually, they are going to just reduce them to distribution companies. What margins will they be looking at? 
uh, the margin they were going to, they were getting on LPG sales. Now, uh, how are you going to translate that uh, with this new system that you are putting in place? So it's important that the MPA uh, comes out to uh, clarify some of these challenges. But uh, we have said that this, this will be a challenge if not dealt with properly. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Richmond Roxon is a principal researcher at the Institute of Energy Security, IES. Now, we're also trying to reach out to the PRO for the local uh, LPG Marketers Association to also get his thoughts as to uh, what is going to happen to their members with the onset of this particular, you know, uh, instruction from government. But as and when we get to, to him, we will put him through to react on this issue. Now, away from that, economist and fellow at Imani Africa, Dr. Theo Achampong, is warning government not to over-rely on oil revenue to turn the economy around. Speaking at a lecture on the critical future of Ghana's energy sector and how to avoid more surprises to Ghana's growth prospects, Dr. Theo Achampong rather urged government to persistently explore for more oil to overcome unforeseen contingencies in the global petroleum industry. Economist and fellow at Imani Africa, Dr. Theo Champon, warns that government over-dependence on oil will leave the economy susceptible to shocks from unstable oil prices of the world market. He was speaking at a lecture on the critical future of Ghana's energy sector and how to avoid more surprises to Ghana's growth prospects. Certainly dependent is we are dependent on four key commodities as we speak currently, which includes oil and gas, and then includes cocoa and then gold output. And what happened was when oil prices declined, we saw that having a negative impact on, uh, on on the economy to the extent that the budget at one point, you know, was making projections of us getting one billion of uh, revenues in a particular year. But prices declined and we only got less than 400 million of those revenues coming in. That's what, you know, the extent to which the dependency on, you know, these uh, commodity exports can expose the country to. So beyond that, we've got to look at what we talked about, uh, or what I talked about, about creating the linkages within the value chain so a lot more value can be retained. I on his part, Chief Executive of the Africa Center for Energy Policy, ASEP, Ben Boachi, called for a relook into all petroleum model agreements of new environmental management plan and licensing laws. He believes a renewal of these laws will not just help make the oil and gas sector competitive, but also attractive to investors. You have to start from somewhere, build that capacity and competency over time, so that you're not exposing the nation to that kind of risk. And that's the point I'm making. So you have to think through that process and see what is feasible in this particular time. The point about you know the contracting uh, model that we need to, 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 to use, I had that discussion extensively already. Uh, we had exhausted that discussion about two years ago, but <laughs> we didn't want to jump in until our name was mentioned somewhere. The lecture was organized by Imani Africa with the aim of exploring ready solutions to Ghana's oil and gas value chain. This was by Charles IT. Now, there are currently about 14 private insurance companies competing for a market space of about 300,000 clients. In order to outcompete their peers, some firms undercut premiums. That's considered a major challenge in the private health insurance industry. Chief Executive of Acacia Health Insurance, Dr. Dan Amo, has been telling us more in this repeat edition of the Joy Business Fan. Dr. Dan Amo is CEO of Acacia Health Insurance. He's been running this business for six years. And my first time that I was exposed to health insurance was 2009. I was um, working in a hospital and then the owners of the hospital looked at ways that we could hold on to our own clients. The private health insurance industry was pretty young then. The National Health Insurance Scheme was supposed to cater for the health needs of the less privileged and private firms mainly for corporate clients. Cosmopolitan Health Insurance Limited is one of the about 14 private health insurance firms operating in the country. Elton Afari is marketing director for the firm. The National Health Insurance Act um, gave the chance for us to be able to have the National Health Insurance Scheme, a private commercial, the private mutual and the district mutual. Um, the framers of the, the act or the law 
so they need for us to have these for uh, various schemes, such a way that at every point in time, one can associate yeah, himself or herself to a particular. Generally, the number of people signed on to an insurance policy in Ghana is low. Current figures put the rate of penetration at 2%. Story same for the health sector. Perhaps most people consider it expensive. Because if you pay and you are not well, immediately you go to the hospital, you just get the, the health care you need and you go back home. So there's this is, this is, this is an important or there's a serious need for each one of us to be able to be insured. Because when you're, if you are not where you go, the least you pay with is about 180, 200, if it's about, let's say, malaria. And maybe you don't have that money there. But if you have insurance and you've already paid your premiums, you just go and you just go back home. The step competition in the private health insurance space for 10 companies competing for a market of about 300,000 clients and to outcompete the peers, some firms undercut premiums. That is considered a major challenge in the industry. Because everybody wants to attract a good number of corporate clients, we see a lot of undercutting on the market. Because the only thing that um, separates a lot of the schemes from each other is how much they charge for their um, services. There are a few of us who have been able to um, scale up a bit in that for us, we have our own um, health facility. That also goes to add on to the services that we're offering. Providing quality services is then most important to stay in business. Most firms are also now venturing into the retail space. We've realized that that is where um, the market is, and that's where we, have, that we find the people. In. And it's one of the things that we are going to use to be able to expand, uh, because we are going to every single district in, in, in Ghana. And you can imagine the number of facilities across, the number of people there. So we believe that if we are able to do things right, to be able to take care of the clients very well and make them happy. I, can, I, I know that we'll be able to be big and even move beyond Ghana. Players are hopeful the numbers would go up in the coming years. Health insurance in Ghana, I think that it has come to stay. It has come to stay. Most of the firms in here, like ourselves, are also learning from the ex uh, experiences year in, year out. Individuals, families, and corporates along the entire spectrum would be able to assess some form of health insurance cover. There are a few things that we need to do before then, and that is what we have worked on and we are still working on. Once we can get it done right, once we know that our numbers work right, we would hit the market, we would ensure that everybody in Ghana would be able to assess some form of a um, some form of a health insurance. So you can catch the Joy Business Van every Wednesday on Business Live with a repeat on Thursdays on the Market Please. And on that note, we wrap up this afternoon's edition of the Market Please. It's been great having you on board. Join us again same time tomorrow for another edition. My name is Imano Abuaji. We have a good afternoon.